That's good. Okay, so then I'm just going to start with the presentation. And I'm Let first... me do a little intro. Uh... Oh, God. Yeah, uh... <laughs> sounds good. Yeah, Woo! I just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so exciting to be here. Thank you so much, guys, for coming. And welcome to our Edge series number two this time yeah uh, i'm zorana and uh, i'm just uh, very happy to host uh, an interesting and creative musicians around uh, today uh, we have a topic of uh, songwriting um, and uh, our guest today is benjamin welcome benjamin hey i'm happy to be here i'm Thank super you so excited much. to still, uh, to share some stuff Thank you so much for accepting the invitation. And I'm actually very excited to have you here because I know you're going to share some uh, badass knowledge and skills that uh, some people might need, want to learn, find interesting. So tell us a bit more about yourself and uh, about uh, your band, Dave Ewer, as well as uh, what you're going to um, talk more about today. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, so I'm Benjamin. Um, I'm uh, mostly a guitar player. I started playing guitar in 2008, I believe. It's been a while. Um, and I think after one or two years of playing, uh, learning to play, I started writing my own stuff. And I started recording as well quite early on. Um, in a in a very very bad way, but everybody has to start somewhere. Um, and I have uh, tried doing uh, a couple of bands, and these days I'm uh, in a in a two man band with a friend of mine, uh, Maxime, and uh, we basically write, record, produce, uh, and uh, publish our own music. Um, and it's a wide variety of rock and metal. And um, yeah, over the years of songwriting, I've uh, found that some things work really nicely, at least for me. And I uh, would like to share these things today. I think what you guys are making is amazing. If anyone didn't check, uh, go to Spotify or any other streaming platform and check Day Viewer, a uh, really cool band. And it did in, in a very exciting variety of genres per song and really interesting concept there. Um, just going to hand you. Go for it, Benjamin. Uh, show us what you have prepared. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Um, well, today I'm uh, going to mainly go into uh writing uh rock songs um and um i'll also be showing a little bit of demoing um i'm not gonna go in depth on uh um hardware or software um mostly talking about the creative process so um what we'll be talking today is um First off, like, how do you even start writing your own songs, or where do you start? Uh, what you need, um, and after that, we're gonna um, go into a step-by-step -step process of how I would write a song. So I've prepared a small track for you all today, um, and I uh, made little like snippets of the entire process of it. Um, and for recording, I'm just going to give some quick tips uh, on what you can do, uh, mostly creative. So where to start when you uh, want to um, write your own material? So first of all, it's, of course, uh, very important to find music that inspires you. So these uh, this music that just you know can be the influence for your own songs um but it's not just um listening you really need to go all the way into how those songs are made up so you can study the sections and overall build of those songs um like 
you know, what kind of structure does the song have? Um, what type of um, recognizable uh, playing and uh, vocal styles are in the, the genre or the, the music that you like? Um, for example, like a lot of metal bands can use blast beats, for example, and like how are those used and in what type of sections are they used? Um, it's just getting an overall feel of the, the, the song. And then also really pay attention to each layer. So uh, what does each instrument do? So it's really uh, good to know how certain instruments play off of each other um, and how they really make a section up together. And the most, absolutely the most important thing is um, just being able to play along with a song because that's a whole lot different than just listening to it because if you play along with it and recreate it you will um essentially kind of build of a muscle memory yeah and um if you have this muscle memory down it will be a lot easier to come up with your own material because you know uh, the kind of notes you would like to use, or the kind of progressions, the kind of chords, the kind of rhythms, um, the type of vocal lines, all those type of things. So that's by far one of the most important things to get inspired and also how to learn how to write songs is by actually playing uh, existing ones. I have a question here, and you said something that is actually uh, inviting my question, that is recreate. Do you think actually doing covers is going to help you find and shape your style? I think so. Yes. Um, if you if you create a cover, you need to make you, you still need to make everything from scratch. So you need to recreate uh, the drum beats. You need to recreate like the guitar riffs or the the vocal lines and. Um, Doing that, you will uh, get a lot more knowledge on how that is all done and how it works together um, uh, compared to just listening to it. Definitely, yep. Yeah. So next is where to start. Uh, you can start very small. So uh, you can write a whole song based on one simple melody you have in your head. Um, you can have like a vocal melody um, or a riff or a, a beat in your head. Uh, and then once you have that, you need to record that or write it down and, and store it, put it somewhere. Uh, and something in a, in a place where it's easy to come back to it a lot later. Um, this way, um, when you come back to it later, you um, it's it's just nice because sometimes you have an idea and um, you don't know how to expand on it. And then you can just, you know, wherever you've stored it, you can come back to it maybe like three years down the line and then you can get inspired about it again. And then um, you can continue writing the song. Um, you can also combine ideas if it feels right. You know, sometimes you have a certain uh, idea for something that's like uh, for a verse, and um, you don't really know what to do with it. And maybe somewhere else in your uh, pile of ideas, you might have a, a good intro or a good chorus. And if the tempos line up, for example, and maybe even the key, then you know you could combine those if it feels right. Um, you never know what can uh, what can happen. Sounds so. like you're actually proposing appreciating a lot the idea and writing down ideas and exploring your ideas actually, right? Yes. Yeah, it's very important to if you have an idea for a song, you just write it down, um, and then you know it it can. Um, it can go very quick. If you go from an idea, you could write a song just within a couple of days and other songs, um, they take their time. But it's very important to have them stored and that you can come back to it later. 
Yeah, and many ideas I would also add sometimes uh, just don't sound right at the very start, but somewhere down the line, uh, it might sound different. So it's like yeah. the way how we perceive and the way how we actually see our own ideas can change through time. So it's always good just to keep them, keep storing them, store yeah. many. Yeah, for sure. Sometimes it's also um, it, an idea just doesn't work and then uh, a, lo a lot later you come back to it and you can use it in a completely different context, which is also nice. Um, you never know what, uh, what the future holds with that stuff. So it can be very interesting. Write down, guys. Write down, guys. Write <laughs> ideas. Appreciate your ideas. Don't yes. question them for now. Yes. Okay. So, what do you need uh, for um, you know recording and writing? So, um, it, it's it's nice to have a PC or a Mac. You know, just uh, a computer. Basically, an audio interface is also very important. Um, if you uh, use any like uh, a guitar or a bass, or uh, maybe you have a MIDI drum kit, or if you have a couple of microphones, you can actually mic up an actual drum kit or um, or whatever you can sing. Um, so getting an audio interface is also very important along with all the cables and microphones to connect whatever you want to record. Uh, a digital audio workstation is basically a software to record uh, all your stuff in and um you could you know i mean i've listed here um that you need at least one instrument or zero and what i mean with that is um if for example if you want to record rock music and you just have one guitar you can record like you can definitely record for a whole band um and because you can use samples from drum kits, you can use uh, a digital bass, a uh, VST instrument, uh, or a synth, or whatever. It doesn't really matter if you have everything. You don't need a big studio and a lot of people. You can really make music on your own. Um, just use the instrument you have or the, the voice you have and uh, fill up the rest with VST instruments. Those are plugins you can buy. Um, and those can, or or you can get them for free. There's a lot of free stuff out there as well. Um, so I'm not gonna go in depth necessarily on, uh, you know, all these options. Just look into it, and uh, we'll go into the uh, creative process now. So let's write a song. I'm gonna share another application, another screen. So, um, so let's say you have an idea, right? And it starts with a guitar riff. So, uh, uh me being a guitarist, I often just noodle around and, uh, try to think of cool riffs. So let's say this is a riff I came up with. I hope that was audible for everybody. Yes, from this side, everyone okay. heard that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. So this is an idea uh, I have for a, a guitar riff. And at this point, it's just this. It's nothing else yet. Um, so I have already recorded it. Uh, so I could save this and then work on it later. So what I can do is I can choose to now add like a, a drumming VST, for example, and then program drums that go along with it and then record some bass um, and then maybe record bits for another song. I can do that all within this software. However, I personally prefer writing in a different software called Guitar Pro. Uh, which you don't need to record anything for. You just need to say like, hey, this is what's being played and it will play it back for you. So 
um, we're gonna have most of the cores actually within that software. So I'm gonna um, share that screen now with you. Um, let's see where it is. So here we are within Guitar Pro. And the riff you just heard, I've actually noted it down within this software. So um, for those who don't know, this is Tab. This is uh, um, a way for musical scoring for a guitar. So each line represents a string on the guitar, and then you can fill the number in according to what fret you want to play it in. I've been writing like this for about... 13 years, I think. So it's also very much baked into my process. Uh, if I need to write completely within a, uh, within a DAW, for example, I actually uh, have a lot of trouble doing it. Um, but yeah, let's just see how this all sounds right now within Guitar Pro. And it's going to sound a lot worse than an actual recording. But, you know, it's all about getting the idea across. So this is uh, that same riff that I just shared uh, the recording of within Guitar Pro. And um, this is basically, you know, I can save this file and I uh, put it on my uh, Dropbox and then it'll be there. And then um, if you have other people working and collaborating with you on music, you can very much easily share this stuff and then somebody other, uh, someone else can add more to this. Um, so it's also a very lightweight way of uh, collaborating on music. Um, now we have this guitar riff, and that's all we have. And um, let's say we're going to add drums first, because drums are very important in the overall feel of the whole thing. So these are some drums here. And I'm just going to. Um, Solo them so you can hear. So these are the most basic drums you can think of, but um, it's just to see like how will the riff feel with these drums underneath it. So let's see, let's hear them together. So that's very basic, um, but drums definitely can change up a whole lot if we change the drum beats for a bit. So um, what if we double time it, for example? So that's going to make it a whole lot more high energy. But um, what if we change up some of these notes over here? and? Technically, you know, the snare is still in the same place, but it's this thing, these changes I made here is going to make it feel a lot more different. You'll hear. So all these small changes uh, within the drums can completely transform how a part of music feels, and that's all very important. So what I did eventually is um, I looked where the riff, uh, what the guitar riff was doing. And the guitar riff in itself has some possible uh, parts where you can say, I want to accentuate this. So let's just listen to the riff on its own for a little bit. So what I personally like is this bit here. Because it, it's really uh, something that returns a lot in this riff. So you will hear it twice. That's once. That's twice. And I would like to accentuate this with the drums. So what I did over at the drum side, as you can see here, I put a kick drum right on this note and a kick drum right underneath this one. So it's going to accentuate this. 
And other than that, I chose not for the um, like the up tempo uh, sound, but for more of a chill and heavy sound. Uh, so I put the drums on the two and the four of the beat. And other than that, I just put like the crashes um, just to make sure that we got a bit more of an open and uh, uh, open feel to it. So, so let's hear the final drums and the guitar together. So yeah, this is just shows how um, how the drums and the guitar can work together here, or how the you know one of them can support the other. Um, and the drums have a bit of an open sound to them on their own. Um, the guitar is pretty uh, rigid with a lot of um, um, stops to it with these uh, palm muted uh, muted notes. Um, and there's a lot going on. You know, there's a lot of notes here uh, overall. And the drums are quite relaxed. They only play whatever you want to uh, um, accentuate, except for 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 this one. Uh, this kick right here doesn't really accentuate a part that's necessary to the guitar riff, but it's always nice to have, or at least I feel it's nice to have a, a a kick drum that leads up to the snare. So let's listen to that. Mm, hold on. <laughs> Just this one. It's just it just feels nice, especially in these uh, type of contexts or these type of riffs. So now that we have uh, drums and bass or uh, guitars and drums, let's add some, add some bass to it. And what I first did here for the bass, I just made a, a complete copy of what the guitar is doing, which is not nice. Um, you'll hear in in a bit. I'll show you. So this is gonna be the the guitar and the bass together. So this is a completely viable option, right? But uh, if you uh, the 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 bass is not really adding anything here. Um, and um, they also say, a lot of people say that uh, the bass and drums are like best friends. And right now, because of the bass is really following the guitar, it's not really um, in the same type of like open, it doesn't really have the same openness as the the drums do. So let's just hear the bass and the drums right now. So yeah, it basically it's basically the guitar riff. So yeah, I did hear a little bit at the end the uh, tiny difference in uh, bass and guitar, but I guess mm. minimal differences, maximal, you know, impact. Just because yeah. this is so typical and expected in rock music. Yeah, well, so this is uh, if I would really, you know, almost copy it. So this is not the final thing I'm going for actually. So let's just change things up a bit. So this is the bass part that um, I eventually went with. And as you can see, it's a lot different. So um, I'm playing a lot more with some higher notes and there's a lot less notes as well. So let's just listen to it soloed. So this is a bit different. Uh, it, it's going to sit a lot better with the drums together. So um, the bass is a, a lot more open right now, which goes along with the drums. 
And for the guitar, I um, accented some notes. So the same notes that I chose to accent in the riff with those uh, uh, kick uh, kick drums over here, I actually um, played them higher in the in the bass. So I uh, played them in the same octave as uh, the guitar does instead of one lower. So here's how it all sounds together. So with this, the um, the bass is supporting. You know, it's supporting both the guitar and the uh, and the drums. It's um, it's been more in harmony, and it, it brings its own stuff to the table. How you can um, it doesn't have the same like muted notes going on. It just stays more open, and some notes it chooses to um, it chooses to uh, accentuate a bit more by have, playing it an octave higher than what you would normally do. And I personally like to play around this with uh, with this stuff a lot. So let's listen to this one more time. So now we have basically written the whole section, right? Um, if we go back, we just had the guitarist. And now we have this whole thing. And uh, this section here could make for a nice intro or uh, a solid chorus. Um, I think both would work really great. Um, and let's say for this song, we would pick it as an intro. So what if we want to go and uh, turn this section, because it's just one riff or one, one intro, um, what if we want to turn it into a song? So, and there's a lot of places we can go. So you can say, you know, we're going to have another electric guitar riff, for example, and then maybe the drums change up a bit, um, or we could go in a completely different way. We could go for, instead of really having a riffy guitar riff, you could have like a simple chord progression. Um, there's a, there's a lot of places you can go, and it, but it's important to know that um, whenever you're writing a song, you want to keep the listener a little bit engaged. So if the next section, whatever comes after this, will have like the same type of guitar riff, and I'm not saying the exact same, right? But you're in the same type of vibe and the drums are kind of doing the same. Um, and you have that again and again and again. Um, you're not really getting a song structure out of it. There needs to be certain changes going on. So you could have, so first of all, you could say the vocals are coming in after this. You, you could still be playing like the same riff and same uh, drum beat underneath because the vocals will bring something new. Um, but um, one thing you could do after that is just even only change the drums, for example. You can go double time and then everything will be, again, interesting. Um, and we will, um, um, you know, go back into uh, or dive deeper into adding some more variation in your composition later in the song. Um, for this, I actually chose to um, go for a chord progression um, because we have this really riffy guitar riff and it's nice to go to a basic song progression after that, especially if we want to go into like a verse part. Um, so let's hear this progression. So 
this is a super, super basic chord progression, but it's uh, something that could work nicely, especially coming off uh, some, you know, a bit of a heavy intro. Um, it's practically the same um, chord progression twice. However, uh, when I played the second time, uh, um, I have a G chord here instead of a B chord. And it's also, again, um, just a nice little variation to bring in. And um, I decided to write the, the, the bass for this next. Um, because even though you have the chord progression like this, doesn't mean you need to play one note every bar. Um, you could play along. Uh, you can play around with it a little bit. So let's hear what I got for the bass on this part. So it's uh, it's doing its its thing, you know, completely the bass line, but it's still within the chord progression as you'll hear. So uh, some notes it just picks the same note as the root of the chord, but it's doing it an octave higher, and sometimes it just picks another note that would fit nicely into it, like this one. And sometimes, uh, or mostly in this case, almost every time, the last note of the bar will lead nicely into the one from the next chord. Uh, these are type of things that you just, it, it'll, um, I'm sure like theoretically, uh, there will be an explanation for this. I don't, I don't know music theory very well, but, um, it's it it all goes on feel something that feels right so um, sometimes you have to choose like a different note uh, that will feel better to progress to the next one um, so let's put some drums under this so as the drums in the last uh, section uh, we had like a snare on the two and the four and uh, I thought for this section it would be fun to put the snare on a different bit and also not use the snare outright, uh, but just have a small little like uh, rim shot. So um, this is how it sounds in this example. Let me see. Yes, here we are. So um, mostly this section here is like different from where you expect. So if I put it here, you'll already hear a different. So this is where the snare was in the in the previous section. And now it's over here. And I also choose to accent some of the notes that the bass is doing so that the um, drum and the bass are kind of like, you know, they're working together. What you do notice, however, if the drums are the same, every bar, the exact same, it does kind of get a little boring. So let's just listen to that closely. Yeah, you know it already by now, right? So um, let's say we want to spice it up a little. And it doesn't mean we have to go crazy with the drums, but there's like these little changes that you can make that can make all the difference. So I've made some small changes here, and let's listen to them.
So um, it feels the same, and it it is the same throughout. But there's the, like these little changes that will make it a lot more interesting to listen to the whole thing. So of course the fill at the end is you know the biggest change, uh, which you can pick out easily. But um, let's go over the other changes. So the first bar, sorry, this one. In the second bar, I um, added um, one extra room shot right here um, in this weird little place, but it just feels good. And I added another open hi hat shot. So let's listen to this one compared to the first one. So it just does a little different thing. And here I ditched the extra rim shot, but I added this open hi-hat here, which hasn't been at this place before. And um, there's no open hi-hat right here at the start of the bar because I just had it open at the end of this one. So let's go over these three one more time. So you don't need to go crazy with your drums, but it does. Um, it kind of makes it a bit more interesting to listen to this whole section. And then, of course, we have this little fill here right at the end, the last bar. Yeah, I guess these uh, tiny events and the variations on uh, what's there are giving a bit more liveliness as well as natural feel because regular yeah. everyday drummer would just indeed a little add here yes. and there, this yeah. and that. If you try to think intuitively how you're making this, just trying to imagine that you're a drummer. Yeah. But on the other hand, yeah, just think of uh, like you, you'll have only a bass, chords going, and the drum that has exactly the same pattern. Or the third and fourth repetition is too much if everything is exactly the same, right? Yes, exactly. So let's listen to this uh, together with the guitar and the bass. So I think that would uh, make a nice part, especially for the verse, would be cool. Um, in this case, I really decided to stick with those clean guitar chords. I actually really like it, so I'm not going to add um, electric, electric guitars here or um, have something else, at least for now. Um, may, may I ask one thing? Uh, yes. So this section that you have now is the second one, and the first one just you showed us is the one that is energetic, right? Yes. Uh, how did you decide what you're going for in the second section? And how did you come up with, okay, maybe you decided to feel it's obvious that it's calmer, but how did you know that this part is going to be compatible with the first part, with the first section that you showed us? Yes. Did you have any type of way of joining these and thinking how they're similar or different? Mm -hmm. So um, I actually, it's like the next part we're going into is how we're going to make a transition because um, yes, part one is very energetic and this part really isn't. Um, the one thing is though, is that, uh, of course it's still all in the same key, same tempo. So that already helps. Um, but there's also, um, this little thing in the guitar riff over here that some of the accents are not exactly like on the one, two, three, or the four of the beat. Sometimes it goes like in between, uh, which you could say adds a bit of a groove to it um and with the bass here i do the same it's um it's not a very you know um on the on the count type of feel um and that combined with the uh references of uh listening to a lot of songs in uh certain styles um I was able to say like, okay, this could work together. 
because there's a lot of uh, like rock songs uh, that you know have this energetic bit and then they calm down and then they build back up. Um, so with that knowledge, I was like, okay, let's let's try for more calm parts for the verse. But um, yeah, as we'll see next, actually, um, it's not gonna work out as great if you put the one section directly uh, after the other. So. Um, Let's continue with that, and then uh, we'll uh, see where this journey takes us. Um, yeah, so what I did here is I took the first section, our rocking section, and I uh, pl uh, placed the uh, calm section directly after it. Let's listen to how that sounds. So yeah, the contrast is too high, right? Uh, the tempo changes, uh, the chord progression comes in, and it's also on a clean guitar instead of an electric one. Um, it's just too much of a change. So um, what we can do to uh, fix this is first say, well, maybe the uh, electric guitar is like one final chord, so you can still hear that going after the, the first starts. So let's hear what that does. So this alleviates some of it. Um, it's already a bit of a less jarring transition because you have some leftover from, or like almost a reminder from the previous part but it's not there yet. I think we need something more. So let's um, make like let's end this uh, guitar section here and really give it room to end and give time to introduce the new section. Let's listen how that sounds. So now we're getting somewhere. Um, what I did, I gave this uh, the electric guitar and like the you know the reminder of the the last heavy riff. I gave the two full bars to let this main chord ring out, and at the same time, um, the bass is already doing some of what it will do in the verse. And the drums are first like calming down. Um, they're doing a bit of a count in, and then they, it's introducing the next section. So let's first hear the, like the last bar of the last section. So it's very energetic, and and see how this uh, how from this section sounds again. So it's different, but. Um, let's see how this transition sounds and so that you can see what I did here. So first the, the drums are giving like the main electric guitar some space to ring out, which is what going to happen over here. And basically, you know, it's you can do this even to get back into a more electric riff once again. So only when this bar kicks in, you get a bit of an introduction already to the section afters because at the same parts I uh, get the rim shot on the snare. And this way. As a listener, you know, like, oh, this section is done, and then you're kindly being transitioned over to this new section. So let's listen to the whole bit. So 
that's already better, a lot better, but I think we can do one more thing. Um, sometimes it's nice to just add uh, one extra like reminder or almost like a warning that we're done with a certain part. Um, and that's gonna sound like this. So I just added this bar here. And it's really saying, you know, this part ends here. Uh, also, it's also being uh, communicated by uh, this drum fill. And then I go into that transition again. So maybe you could say it's too much, um, but I personally liked it this way. So let's hear it again. That sounds phenomenal and so organic all together, really. Yes. <laughs> I have a very interesting tiny question here. Yes. Um, and that is connected to the symmetry. Are you not afraid because it's really common in music, like you have four bars, eight bars, two bars, and mm -hmm. things are very often... Uh, connected in formal way, a uh, symmetrical way. And when there is a repetition, the repetition is very often similar with a minimal difference, uh, mostly at the end somewhere. But it's like, it, it would be if it was four bars, it's four bars. What you added here is a little more uh, odd number, uh, how you are when you're writing, dealing, explaining, and uh, how you are uh, handling this unevenness. It really depends. So I I don't go uh, on purpose saying like, oh, this needs another extra uh, or, or I mean, when I'm writing a certain part, I'm not like super aware of like how many bars uh, it needs or if it needs something extra upfront, but especially with transitions and stuff, you sometimes it just needs that extra one because, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just based on feel. So, um, yeah, in, in this case, I would not have added these extra bars if, um, if the sections worked going from one to another. Um, but, um, I really needed the transition to go from one part to another. And then I just, um, added an extra bar and then I added another extra one because it just <laughs> makes it feel better and it gives you more time to uh, to introduce the next section or close off another one. Um, yes, yeah, it's almost it really a, like your trouble, uh, uh, like you, you're searching for the uh, your troubleshooting and then after that you're actually having that this complete freedom to add everywhere, even a little extra bar, a little extra reef, extending, yeah. uh, shortening. Um, th this is actually your, indeed, uh, really, uh, th this shows your prog mind, because uh, prog music would always go this way. Things are so not symmetrical there, and there are so many, uh, these small um, uh, additionals here and there, and it's very well connected to the development of the motif and the feel of it and not the symmetry of the parts. Very often they are asymmetrical yeah. in so many ways. Yeah, it, it really depends. It, it just, at the end of the day, it needs to feel good. So if, yeah, if you're going from one part to another it needs to feel good and, um, you know, whatever it takes, if you need to add one more bar or three, it's, it's fine. <laughs> 
It shows a lot of uh, creativity, and I think this is a really good and key moment for people to open their minds because I think very often they would be afraid to do this. Yeah, uh, that this would be the moment where they would pull back and say, "Hey, uh, I cannot just add now here one extra bar. What is this?" Mm -hmm. uh, and that's actually very often the moment where the creativeness uh, pays off uh, because here you are giving. And a little bit of extra flavor, a little bit of extra variation, and unevenness, which very often catches a listener's ear. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, so when we go on, um, you just notice this whole section uh, with the clean guitar and the bass groove. Um, and it's nice. Um, and it's uh, eight bars long. And I think, you know, you can add vocals over this and it'd be awesome, but um, to just go over into a completely different section after this with electric guitars um, is also not, um, I would almost find it a pity because as the listener, you're really just getting into it. Um, and um, sometimes it's better to build off a certain part and to evolve it other than uh, creating something entirely new. So that's what we're going to do. So what I'd like is to take this part as a whole and um, maybe just add some electric guitar to it and just to build off this, uh, build off this whole chord progression. So um, yeah, let's see how that sounds. If I add some guitar to this. So these are some, you know, some quiet, like palm muted guitars. It's it's uh, starting to build. Start is kind of build up towards something. Um, however, um, even though this fits with what's currently going on, uh, in general, like so, the tone of things, it follows the chords. You know, uh, um, it, it the vibe is now a little bit off. I think we need to evolve the drums a little bit more. So. Um, Let's uh let's up the drums a little bit. So what I did here is uh, I added you know a little bit more extra kick, I believe, and mostly like the snares going just I don't hit the the, the rim anymore. I just hit the you know, the actual snare. And um, I'm going from all closed hi-hats to a bit more open. I'm not going completely open on the hi-hats yet. As you can see, I always use the, I also use the closed ones and it creates a bit more of a interesting pattern. So let's quickly compare the drums from the first part to the second one. And now this. Now, as the kick is mostly still on the same place, it kind of feels like an e evolving bit. Um, however, we got into a different problem now because our bass is still this really floaty and open and calm thing, while the drums actually intensified a little bit. So let's see how that sounds together. I think actually the the bass could use a bit more flavor uh, and maybe follow up on the guitar a little bit more because those two are just too disconnected right now if you listen to them. So, hold on. This is what I need to have. <laughs> um. There's just too big of a difference between them. Um, so I'm actually going to change up the bass quite a lot. As you see here, it's going to get a lot more notes. Uh, let's see how that sounds.
And it's kind of following the guitar, but it's also like every time the guitar stops, the bass stops only one note later. Um, and it kind of seems to make it pop it out a bit more. It's like saying, hi, I'm still there. Um, and it's still, the way it moves around is still reminiscent of that first part. Um, however, might it now be too, too different from that first part? Let's listen. Um, let's listen to this whole thing. It's actually quite an evolving bit. So let's see what happens if we put these two together. This actually kind of seems to work nicely. Um, however, one of the main reasons is that of that is because I kind of announce the part up front with this little drum fill over here. So you can see here, I already used the snare a couple of times actually to say, hey, this is gonna change. So let's listen to that separately for the drums. So that fill really creates a nice little transition over to this next part. And we're still using the same elements mostly. Um, so that's what makes it work. And we're still on the same general tempo and uh, it's the exact same chord progression. It's just, you know, just a little bit spicier than before. Let's, let's listen to this one more time. So this is nice. Um, uh, actually, this chord progression, of course, it was, uh, or the previous verse, it was eight bars. Um, and it really, you know, took its time. And this new uh, flavor of it, it's kind of building up to something, possibly. Um, and I would like to have the whole progression here. So I want to have the four chords again. Um, to do it in this exact same way might make it a bit more boring. So I will actually uh, um, want to build it up even further. So making it a bit more heavier as well. So I'm getting, gonna give the guitar more notes. Um, I'm gonna let the drums actually go over to use some splashes instead of the um, hi-hats. And um, I'm gonna get the bass to follow the guitar even more. So let's see how that sounds like. So it's really, again, you know, an involvement of that last bit, uh, but again, slightly heavier and really that ending is really building up something with this nice little, uh, lengthy drum fill and the way how this last chord ends. So let's listen to the last two bars. So that's really gonna open the door for, you know, a bit of a new section and possibly heavier. Um, and we'll get to that later. Let's first listen to what we have so far in total.
Yeah. Looks like uh, we got a little bit more of a song on our hands now. It's really got, you know, a nice thing going on. Um, the intro could be a bit longer, though. That uh, first uh, that first riff, I think I would like to hear it twice. It's just that, again, hearing this uh, twice, um, you would expect or it would be nice to have some more variation going on at this first riff. So um, what I did is I uh, played this, um, I doubled the time that we played this uh, first riff, but I added a clean little melody over it, another layer or so. Let's see how that sounds. So I did this with the clean guitar, and it's not really like a, a very, I would say, uh, a melody that you could, you know, um, in the traditional sense, I would say. It's, um, it's mostly meant to give some extra texture to what the guitar is doing here, and it's also, again, accenting some parts. So... Um, it goes it accents the rhythm as well, the whole thing and some of the chords. So let's listen to this on its own. Oh yeah, it is basically just you know, a bit more texture on what's going on with the other stuff. And then it also goes along with this little fill here at the end and introducing the new section as well. So let's listen to that in total. Start from here. Yeah, it just makes it a bit more interesting and it even helps with the introduction of the verse as well. So anyway, now that we had this uh, whole build up at the end of the verse, let's look into writing a chorus. So um, for this chorus part, I actually uh, thought it'd be nice to start out from a different chord, this progression. Now, so far, um, the, the chord progression has been uh, starting on the uh, on an E for the entire verse. Um, so I thought it'd be you know something new to give to the listener to uh, to to spice it up a little bit you know to start this progression on a C instead. Um, and it's it even helped as well that the uh, verse ended on uh, on an A. Um, you really need to like what what did the previous section end on and how can i uh, continue what feels right um so let's listen to this chord progression that i uh, came up for chorus so it's something different again it has some uh on uh, harmonic things going on as well. Um, but I don't want to play like this whole chord because um, we already had like whole chords playing like this the entire time during the verse. So I want to do something different. Um, and it also sounded like uh, with the drums, especially that we're building up to something of a higher tempo, which also would be nice. So. Um, yeah, let's see. We're going to go electric as well on the electric guitar. We're going to go heavy. So uh, let's see how this bit sounds here. So 
It's not doesn't really sound nice, does it? It's uh it's the same uh, tempo of notes all the way throughout. Um and there's not all the all the notes from the chords are not in there. Um because we had these nice chords going on. Let's listen to them. And uh, now, now we just get this. So um, let's fix that rhythm first. So we want to add some drums and get a bit more of a interesting pattern going on. And um, I also want to change up the rhythm, maybe bar by bar, depending on how this progression feels. So let's maybe first just listen to the guitars here. To got more context on where we where we came from. So there's a bit more of an interesting rhythm, and sometimes it changes as well, uh, and it moves around a bit more overall. Uh, same, I did the same thing with the bass. But of course, this needs uh, more drums to get into context, so. so this, uh, I really like this, uh, this main pattern that I uh, have going on here. But I, I didn't want to go for it for the entire verse, because that would feel very long to be in the same thing. Uh, and I want it to be more exciting in general. So um, I added some different rhythms as well. Let's see. It's a very busy part. Uh, it changes a lot, but... Um, for me personally, it works because um, it's just the, these lot of variations. And also with how the chord progression goes, it kind of drops at the end uh, down, which is also accented on the bass uh, because you go to, to the absolute lowest note in the whole progression. And, you know, it's nice to go a little bit heavier there as well. So that's where we got the China hits outside here and uh, we missing a snare hit. Yeah, we still miss the uh, um, extra uh, uh, notes from the um, chords that made it interesting. And I decided to add those with uh, some extra guitar layers as uh, harmonies. So let's listen to those for a little bit. No, again, in just within this context and also without uh, in this software, it doesn't really sound really nice. But such a typical Guitar Pro sound. <laughs> yes, but if we listen to everything, it will uh, be kind of cool. So that's again like I uh, made the chorus, you know, I made it its full length, so I added uh, the same progression another time. And I also added these like chuggy chords at the end to make it a bit more heavier. So let's listen to that one more time. And the drums go full in on that as well. Uh, it just makes it, you know, a nice, almost like crowd pleasing end there to the to the chorus, getting that low note and the chunginess out there. And uh, you could probably put the, a cool vocal melody or a cool vocal ending to that chorus on there. So uh, 
now that we have uh, a chorus, let's uh, just listen to how the whole track sounds. Yeah, what so that, a uh... trick! <laughs> <laughs> so that's the whole thing. Uh, as you can see, like I added the main riff again back after the chorus. Uh, it's uh, it's almost a standard to do that, but it's fun. Um, and I also took note like how this uh, how the chorus ends. It kind of ends on these lower notes than before, and that's because it will make the transition better to the main riff. So let's maybe listen to that soloed. Also with a nice little uh, drum fill here to make the transition. So, um, and of course, you know, you can add another verse after this, or you could go into a bridge, uh, but you know, it's, it's about the, uh, um, you can use the same type of methods, you know, you can come up with a completely new parts at the same way uh, that we written all the previous ones. Um, and now it comes down to recording this whole thing. So either uh, this is, so this is the way I work. So after I have like a song that I'm, you know, mostly happy with, then I'll, within Guitar Pro, then I'll record it. Um, but you could have gone through this whole process just within your DAW while having recorded everything. Um, that's definitely also a nice way to do it. Um, but for me, you know, I write here first and then I record it. Um, and the nice thing I like about it here is because I program the drums here, um, I can export uh, this to MIDI and then the drum sampler uh, with my DAW uh, will, you know, read that stuff. So. Let's go over to our uh, DAW. Let me change the window. Let me see. Yes. So, of course, uh, this is Easy Drummer 3 that I use. Uh, I've always used Easy Drummer. Um, so, what I did here is basically import the MIDI that I got from uh, Guitar Pro to let the drums here play this. So let's listen to that. Already sounds a lot better than Guitar Pro, right? Um, but, you know, even if... Um, if you don't want to write your own drum parts and you don't want to use Guitar Pro, there's actually within Easy Drummer a lot of different, you know, pre-made drum grooves that you can use, um, and you can write uh, use these to write 
songs quite easily. Um, it has a super nice editor as well, where you can add all kinds of different things. Um, these days, it even has, uh, if you record uh, a guitar part, you can put it in here, and then it will come up with a drum part on its own using AI. It's uh, the world we live in these days. It's not always perfect, but uh, um, it does help sometimes. So when it comes down to recording, I'm not going to go into the basics, of course, of uh, how to record and how to use this software, because it's more of a creative thing. Um, so first off, um, it's not necessary to have every instrument. As I said earlier, the only things I recorded in this demo are my guitars. Uh, the bass I actually use from Guitar Pro. So I let Guitar Pro render out an MP3 from the bass and put it in here. Um, and this, it, it was fine enough. Um, and my drums are, of course, also sampled. So what's nice when it comes down to writing and demoing is that you want to be flexible. Uh, and it still needs to be quick. So. Uh, what's very important or what can help a lot is when you're on a guitar uh, or a bass or what, whatever, it's nice that you can keep your uh, um, the source of the tone. So um, I plug my guitar into my uh, uh, interface and I recorded that and that sounds very um, very basic because there's no amp at this point, so that sounds like this. Not super impressive, of course, but um, I use um, a software called Helix to make a, you know, to simulate a guitar tone out of this. Um, and this is nice because I can get a completely get different guitar tone even after I recorded it. So right now it sounds like this. But uh, if I choose to, I can, you know, I can change the amplifier, I could change it to a different tone and so some... Wait, that uh, functions something like a MIDI for guitar, but for audio, like if I understood, you can actually change the sound of the guitar after you record it. Yes. And oh, it's not wow. like it's MIDI, so it's it's basically like your guitar. So I just take the signal from my guitar, and that's being recorded instead of like, you know, uh, an, instead of recording an amped guitar, you just record the guitar, and then you can simulate the amplifier after. That's phenomenal. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so this... Uh, uh, that's why, like, I was like, oh, of course, he's using Gitter Rig, not Gitter Rig. What's happening? Like, <laughs> yeah, because everyone would indeed, but they well, just... no, Guitar Rig works the same thing. Uh, so if you have Guitar Rig in here, you can also use that. Um, I didn't know that that feature yeah. is already out there. Phenomenal. Yeah. So um, it's it's just it just opens up a lot more because I previously I had like a physical. Um, amp simulator that I plugged in, but then I could never, you know, re uh, change the tone after I recorded. So then I needed to re-record the whole thing if I wanted a new tone. So, um, and this is very nice because it allows you to experiment with different types of sounds. Yeah, um, and you don't have to like record all the time. Like you get yeah. ready for the recording, you have that ready and that's done. Yeah. Yes. And also for this demo, um, I also wanted to play around with different types of sounds. So what I did is I um, mainly tried experimenting with the verse and uh, the intro. So also, by the way, um, when you're recording a demo, um, just really feel free to copy paste bits. So the the verse riff from the intro, I uh, copy pasted it so that I had it again at the end and I didn't need to re-record it. Um, I did some really nasty copy pasting and blending for the chords. 
Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, you just need to get the idea across. So, um, yeah, let's just first listen to this whole thing and then uh, with everything recorded and then I'll explain some more stuff. Yeah. Let me see. So this is the uh, the main recording that I did. So we have all the the same layers. Um, the only thing I mostly wanted to experiment with was the sound of certain things. So, um, for example, this intro, uh, the intro layer, was a clean uh, sound in the in the in the Guitar Pro. But I also experimented with having it electric so let's first listen to this uh, clean one i did a lot of uh, a lot of delay going on as well it's just to fill out that layer a bit because otherwise it uh, can sound very dry especially in this uh, context uh, but again, the nice you want to stay flexible, right? So uh, with this type of software and this way type of recording, you can easily tweak the delay, turn it off, or add some other things. Um, but in the creative process, I didn't really think this sounded that good uh, at the beginning, and I actually uh, recorded this as in a more of a lead electric part. So let's hear that. Let's listen to that on top of the main riff. So that's also a totally viable option, right? It's it's very important to keep experimenting later on with different types of sounds. Um, also for the verse, the what I had in Guitar Pro first were just these open chords. And eventually, I went with something a bit more, you know different <laughs> um mo mostly strumming like the the separate notes in each chord so let's listen so that also makes it a little bit more of an interesting listen and it kind of blends well with what the bass is doing over there you could even do both at the same time just have it as nice little layers so just like this Uh, 
I also experimented with doing more of an electric uh, tremolo type feel. But I didn't really uh, thought that one worked so well. Let's listen to that in combination with the rest of the track. Yeah, just it's such a completely different vibe. I thought it would, would really work nicely, but at the end, uh, it didn't. To, today, that anymore. It's, it sounds uh, 90s. <laughs> yeah. It sounds so 90s, some of the uh, uh, bands and songs. Yeah, it doesn't really fit in this in this song. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's what I have to say about recording. Is is you want to stay flexible with still looking up important or, or different types of sounds and different types of vibes if you feel necessary. Some um, that's what I have on when I record with Guitar Pro or when I write with Guitar Pro. When I actually record it, it it just feels different sometimes. Um, and then it's important to, you know, stay flexible and try some different type of variations or different types of recordings to see what does work and what doesn't. Um, it's a, it's, you know, it's still a creative process recording your demo. And that's why you also don't need to be, uh, so super, um, um, hard on yourself that every little recording needs to be perfect. There are definitely some times here when the recording is just a bit off in the rhythm or uh, I just copy pasted something or whatever, but that's okay because you're just still finding the song and um, want to see if it actually works out before you really commit to making the final recording for this. So I a think- dem Demo you should have just a sketch. Uh... Yeah, it's almost a sketch. Though, I mean, if if I, at this point, you know, if I uh, think, oh, these bits really work, then I can, you know, re-record them or keep the recording if it's good enough, you know, and then really start working on the mix and all that kind of stuff to make it more of a final track. I really liked uh, all in all that in this track, there was no measure that was this exactly the same and repeated. Literally, there was always somewhere some variation. Is that already a new chord? Is that already a little tiny um, change in the bass, in the drum? Like just this tiny different patterns. So like so so many uh, variations and variants uh, only in that one section. Not to uh, mention cross section, how they're actually um, uh, completely different and sometimes. Uh, up polarizing, like completely uh, uh, hitting the different uh, mark and different feel. Yeah. Uh, so this is also probably a good advice to send to someone uh, if they want to write to have a lot of different uh, differences and uh, variations throughout the song. Yeah, it's, it's really important. Um, and it, it's not necessary that a, a, a... A song needs to have all type of different things per se, but it even um, it's just nice that to present the listeners with something new every you know amount of time, and that can be even adding a layer on top of an existing thing, or bringing out an existing layer uh, to you know a higher volume, or just playing it a little bit differently. Um, because this is really, uh, uh, the way this is written is really, you know, it has really strong, you know, song sections, you know, so clearly something that is an intro and then you go into a verse and then you're building up to a chorus. Um, if you have more of an experimental thing going on where you want to really build on the same thing without, a, without an existing structure, um, that's completely fine. Uh, that's completely okay. It's really awesome, but at the same time, with those type of uh, songs, you still really need to keep into account that it's not. Uh, it, it does not need to be the same exact thing for like I don't know eight minutes or something like that. Um, and then you really need to find a way to, um, you know, add like a little layer or a little variation to keep the listener engaged for that time. Um, and in it's the, actually harder than 
writing these type of songs? Uh, in uh, classical music, we call, uh, or at least if I'm translating well, um, when you're staying in the same section, you're trying to keep uh, uh, minimum uh, differences and maximum similarities, as in things that are similar, just tiny variations. And yeah. when you're comparing the sections, actually, this is where you go strong on the differences. And there you keep um, uh, minimal similarities and maximal differences. There yeah. you're actually trying to go strong on the uh, on their uh, differences. Yeah. Yeah. And contrast. Contrast is the good word. Yeah. Yeah. Contrast for sure. Um, and even like in the verse, for example, where I just switch up like the little uh, rim shots on the snare, those are like, you know, minimal uh, things just to keep the listener engaged in that one part. So, yeah, but I think this is this is it. <laughs> I I don't think I have any more uh, to share. So um, it was yeah. outstanding and uh, really um, eye opener. Uh, this uh, whole session. Uh, I would like to ask if anyone has uh, any questions, please uh, write down now in the uh, chat. Uh, Benjamin is going to answer. So feel free to bring in any uh, questions there in the chat. And in the meantime, uh, we are here from the Stiller Sound Foundation, and the team is here collaborating and creating this Idris series that we started in order to educate, in order to promote uh, good uh, song making, music making, creativity, and uniqueness in the uh, music industry. Um, I would like to invite everyone to check our podcast called Seller Sound Podcast, where we are um, uh, hosting a unique and groundbreaking musicians all over the world. Uh, this uh, session is going to be available on our uh, Patreon and Discord, so please join us. And very soon we are going to indeed start with the Patreon, so support us. Um, feel free uh, to write your impressions on uh, uh, on uh, one of our channels called uh, Feedback and Improvements. Uh, we would really like to hear and see all your suggestions. And as well, Thank you, uh, Stella team. Thank you, Lina, for being there in the background and uh, making sure that uh, our technical side is uh, in place. Thank you so much, Benjamin, for your time, energy uh, you invested into creating this uh, uh, lesson. I think uh, it's really um, so insightful and so full of <clears throat> such valuable learnings. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you uh, for uh, letting me do this. It was a lot of fun. I All have right. actually a question. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> so, how did you fro go from the scoring into Reaper, where you then could um, do all the different sounds? Mm, that is the part, of course, I could rewind. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Yeah. What you export MIDI or what is it again that you're using? Yeah, so from Guitar Pro, I exported the MIDI track. So uh, it exports like MIDI from all the Guitar Pro tracks. And then I can use that MIDI file to uh, import it into Reaper. And um, there I have all the tracks separated. So if I have a separate drum track, in Guitar Pro, it will make a, a separate audio channel or uh, for the MIDI uh, that I can use in Reaper. And then I uh, I can basically uh, drag that in to the, to the drum VST or let the drum VST play from that MIDI track that I exported from Guitar Pro. Oh yeah, that's, uh, that's excellent. Yeah. And really free. So, um... Yeah, cool. Yeah, it really helps a lot. And uh, sometimes I also use it for just scoring different type of things. So um, within Guitar Pro, you can also create like synth lines or synth tracks or even like orchestral tracks. And it, it, it doesn't really sound, you know, impressive, but 
it's really important just to have it there for the scoring. And then you can export it to MIDI. So I also wrote like uh, synth uh, tracks or uh, violin or piano tracks within Guitar Pro that I then exported. And then I had the MIDI ready to go when I uh, went into Reaper. Of course, and then it doesn't have to say a violin, for example. It can yeah. be anything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So sometimes I uh, basically copy pasted uh, a guitar track to uh, to a synth, and that would just add a little bit of extra layering, for example. Um, so yeah, that's a, it's a very again flexible way of working. That could be even another Edo session, um, sound design, <laughs> layering, and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would be cool. It's a nice uh, parallel to the Sibelius, which is truly made for uh, scoring and mostly, I guess, orchestral and classical yeah. type. But indeed, the uh, guitar uh, pro, I guess, is made for guitarists. You have yeah. tabs. Many do know on the tab type of reading. Yeah, yeah. I I am only now getting into reading actual sheet music because so far I've only read tab. So, um, but yeah, for me it's, it's always been nice. And Guitar Pro has also been a huge help in learning how to write music because I uh, there's a lot of Guitar Pro files out there from existing songs and opening yeah. one of those. Uh, you can really quickly see, you know, how a song is built up, and especially like how certain drum parts are made. Or uh, so uh, that's it. That was a huge help. Yeah. Yeah, articulation matters a lot to learn and understand what's what. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good stuff. Truly good stuff. Um, awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for being here, Lena. Uh, good job, and thank you so much. Uh, for participating. I mean, you know it, we're already here every day. And Benjamin, yeah, our first official guest, but it's like a uh, uh, second uh, episode. I'm really yeah. looking forward to see uh, every next being completely different. Uh, the yeah. topics are going to be truly, yeah, like uh, on a completely different level every time. So, yeah, awesome. Yeah, it was Good. nice. Yeah, indeed. Cool. Yeah. Also, the the variation parts really um, is something I get into personally now into composing to do interesting stuff with minimal changes, but that keep it interesting. This is a vital thing. Yeah. 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 Really, just uh, practice with that stuff, you know. And it mostly it's, it it all comes down to feel. If you play back a certain part and you feel like um, it's not interesting enough or whatever, and you can see, you know, what what little change can I make, and then play back. It's a lot of trial and error and a lot of different things, and it it it's all come it all comes down to feel. Good feels, good feels, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so, cool. Yeah, uh, shall so we wrap it up? Yeah, let's yeah. Uh, wrap it. Yeah, uh, I, I did my uh, thank you, everyone, and thank you so much. So I'm just now waiting for us to have a little chatter at the end, which we will probably cut out. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah. Uh, but thank you so much, guys, for being here. Uh, this is amazing. It feels great to uh, be part of this, to participate, uh, and as well as to relearn and see uh, how your songwriting and demoing functions, Benjamin. It is uh, so interesting, insightful, and your songwriting is really outstanding. Uh, I love how you uh, thought yourself and how you learned just by repeating, learned by just listening, imitating, and this is why in music you can actually rely a lot on your intuition and just from there enjoy truly enjoy music that is why it's for everyone and that is why it's so yeah. accessible yes um have a good evening everyone have a good time have a good rest yes you too it was a pleasure same thing bye bye yes. bye bye, -bye. Yeah, a pleasure. bye guys yeah.
Bye.